And so Jonah obeyed. He went inside the city of Nineveh. He proclaimed the message and there was repentance. So he obeyed, he cooperated with God. So I would like to call this Jonah runs together with God. And what happens in chapter 4? He was disappointed. The Bible says in Luke chapter 15 that for one soul repented, the whole heaven rejoicing. But in the book of Jonah, 120,000 people repent and Jonah was disappointed. Yes. And even the Bible says in Jonah chapter 4, he said, I rather die than live. He would like to make his own decision, not God's decision. Well, to be faithful with the subtitles of the chapters that I make. Well, I call this Jonah runs ahead of God. Okay, so this is the brief overview of the book of Jonah. And then let us look again in some of the overview of the book of Jonah. From other angles of perspectives. Of course, this is all based on the book itself. In chapter 1, verse 17, the Bible says, The Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. In other words, he was saved. And so he prayed to the Lord in chapter 2. And this is a very good prayer of Jonah. Okay. And then what happens in chapter 3? Who was saved in chapter 3? What is the story about? It is the Ninevites who were saved. So Jonah was saved and then he prayed. The Ninevites were saved. In chapter 3. And let us see chapter 4 of the book. Jonah also prayed in chapter 4. And what is his prayer? In, in verse 2, uh, the Bible says, He prayed to the Lord. And he said, Oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? In verse 3, he says in his prayer, Oh Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. He prayed. So when he was saved, he was very happy. But when others were saved, he was not happy. Perhaps Jonah represents also or he has similar attitude as the elder brother of the prodigal son. When the brother was saved, the elder brother was not happy. Uh, 
Let us continue looking at the book as a, our review of the book of Jonah. Here in the book of Jonah, we can see also the presentation of God being the creator. It's very interesting that in this small book, there are many mentions about the natural elements, natural uh, objects. Such as wind. You have also sea, 그리고 바다에 대해서, land, 그리고 땅에 대해서, fish, 물고기에 대해서, day and night, 그리고 낮과 밤에 대해서, dust is also mentioned, 먼지도 나옵니다. vine is also mentioned, 포도 덕물이 나옵니다. worm is also mentioned, 그리고 벌레에 대해서 나옵니다. there is also sequence of days in the book of Jonah. There is also a mention of herd and flock. Men and also women. Son. So this all tells us about God being the creator. Especially when you see that God even sent a great wind. He has the power. He is the creator. Well, even in the testimony of Jonah to the uh, crew of the ship, to the other passengers, this is what he said. Jonah chapter 1 verse 9. I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord the God of heaven who made the sea and the land. So he testified about his God. And he said, my God is the creator who made the sea and the land. Actually, this statement of Jonah is a response to five questions of the, uh, the, the crew of the ship. The first question is, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? Second question, what do you do? Third question, where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? Well, perhaps when we are sitting next to someone in a flight or maybe in a bus ride, Perhaps we never have the first question asked to us. But of course, the other four questions, these are very common questions. So what is your work? What is your occupation? Oh, where do you come from? What is your country? Or from what people are you? These are common questions people may ask us. What have been our answers? Especially when they ask, uh, are you a Christian? What is your denomination if you are a Christian? What do you believe? So Jonah was brave enough now. So he said, in one answer only, I am a Hebrew, I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. Is that clear? Okay. 
There are many things in the book of Jonah, but I just want to have like an overview before we move to the book of Revelation about the three angels' message. The reason is that the book of Jonah is also the book of mission. And the answer of Jonah for me sounds like the three angels' message. Fear God and give Him glory. And worship Him who made the heaven and earth and all the springs of water. So when Jonah says, I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. 그래서 요나가 어, 하나, 하늘의 하나님, 바다와 육지를 지으신 하늘의 하나님을 경배한다고 할 때. Well, although the three angels' message is presented later in the book of Revelation, but for me, this sounds like the three angels' message. 새 천사의 기별 자체는 나중에 요한계시록에 나오는 것이지만, 어, 이 자체가 그 메시지를 반영을 하고 있다고 생각을 합니다. And it is interesting in verse 16. Chapter 1, the book of Jonah. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to Him. So Jonah said, I worship the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the land, and after all the events that took place, there was a response. They feared the Lord and they gave sacrifice to Him. So, presenting the Creator in the book of Jonah, the Creator is described as intervening of things that are taking place. For example, in chapter 1, verse 4, the Lord sent a great wind. And then in verse 1, verse 9, the Lord made the sea and the land. 구절에 보시면 방금 보신 것과 같이 하늘, 바다와 육지를 지으신 한, 하나님이십니다. Chapter 1 verse 17 The Lord provided a great fish. 그리고 17절에 보시면 여호와께서 큰 물고기를 예비하신 것으로 나옵니다. And then chapter 2 verse 10 The Lord commanded the fish. 그리고 10절에 보시면 2장 10절에 보시면 물고기에게 말씀을 하십니다. Chapter 4 verse 6 The Lord provided a vine. 4장 6절에 보시면 방망쿨을 예비를 하십니다. Chapter 4 verse 7 God provided a worm. 그리고 4장 7절에 보시면 하나님께서 벌레를 예비하십니다. Chapter 4 verse 8 God provided a scorching east wind. 8절에 보시면 뜨거운 동풍 동풍을 예비하십니다. So it is all about God. 모든 것이 하나님께서 하시는 일입니다. Without God nothing would take place, nothing would happen in the book of Jonah. 않았다면, Jonah might not have any idea about why all of this happened. 뭐 but God was there being the creator. God is not only presented in the book of Jonah as creator but also as savior. 하나님께서는 요나서에서 단지 창조주뿐만 아니라 구원자로서 등장을 하십니다. Because in chapter 1 verse 2 God says go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. 1장 2절에 보시면 너는 일어나 저큰 성읍 니누에로 가서 그것을 향하여 외치라. God wants to save the great city. 하나님께서는 그큰 성읍을 구원하고 싶어 하셨습니다. For that reason he sent Jonah. God is our Savior. And for the second time in chapter 3 verse 2, God says, Go to the great city of Nineveh. Second time. And 
and Nineveh is described as an exceedingly great city. Jonah entered the city. This is all about the city. Just imagine how many times the word city is mentioned in the book of Jonah. This is really mission to the city. And the message is the three angels' message. So Jonah went out of the city. And Jonah wanted to see what would happen to the city. And God says, should I not be concerned about the great city? Oh, this is all about the city of Nineveh. God the Creator. Made everything possible. So that He being the Savior. Can save the great city of Nineveh. He has a message. He needs a messenger. To preach that message. And the target of that message and the messenger is the great city of Nineveh. And so what do we learn? God is the creator. Testifying him results in repentance. God the creator is also God the savior. As a savior he sends people for a mission that they may be rejoicing together with him. 그래서 그 구원자로서 하나님께서는 사람들을 보내셔서 사람들이 그 메시지를 기별을 받아들여서 그분과 함께 기뻐할 수 있는 그런 상황에 이끄십니다. In seeing the repentant souls. 모두 회개하는 사람들을 보면서 그 영혼들을 보면서 기뻐할 수 있도록 이끄십니다. What else do we learn? 또 우리가 배울 수 있는 교훈이 뭐가 있을까요? Several time the word great is mentioned. 어, 큰이라는 단어가 여러 번 사용이 되는데요. Do you remember? 기억이 나십니까? Great wind, it's there. What else? Great fish. What else? Great city. What else? Great storm. So this is also a small book about great things. If there are many great things presented in this book, what do you learn? What do I learn? This is my conclusion. God must be great. Because he could instruct great wind. He could command great fish. He could convert a great city. We are worshipping a great God. The greatest of all. And because of that, we should not fear. We should not be afraid. Just to help us not to confuse between fear and afraid. Because sometimes we use the word fear in the positive meaning to fear God. 경애하는 것에 대해서 얘기를 하는 것이 아니라 어, 우리가 겁을 내거나 두려워할 필요가 없다는 것입니다. God must be great. 하나님께서는 정말 위대한 분이십니다. What do we learn? 또 우리가 어떤 것을 배울까요? Just as God has power over the nature because He is the Creator. 하나님께서는 창조주이시기 때문에 모든 자연 현상을 주관하시고. God also will give us power to accomplish His mission of salvation because He is the Savior. 하나님께서는 구원자이시기 때문에 우리가 이 구속 사역을 완성하는 힘을 주실 것입니다. What do we learn? 또 우리가 어떤 것을 배울까요? The Creator, Savior intervenes. 창조주이시자 구원자이신 하나님께서는 우리 세상 일에 관여를 하십니다. I like this Bible text in Romans chapter 8 verse 28. 어, 로마서 8장 28절에 제가 좋아하는 구절이 있는데요. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. 
우리가 알거니와 하나님을 사랑하는 자, 곧 그의 뜻대로 부르심을 입은 자들에게는 모든 것이 협력하여 선을 이루니라. He makes things possible. 하나님께서는 모든 것이 가능하게 만드시는 분이십니다. Sometimes we are so much overwhelmed. 때때로는 우리가 감당하기 버거운 일들이 있습니다. Looking at this great city of Seoul. 그리고 이큰 서울이란 도시를 볼때 막막하기까지 합니다. Or many other great cities. 또이 세상에는 서울 외에도 다른 많은 도시들이 있습니다. And looking at ourselves. 그리고 우리의 그 어, 미력한 어, 할수 없는 여러 가지 약점들을 볼 때. Especially when you see that there are 10 or 15 in the room only. 특히, 어, 뭐 15명, 그 볼 때, we think, oh, we are so small. 아, What can we do? We are so few. We are so small. But we know that God is great. So we should not be afraid because God is great. Well, does this sound familiar to you? 어, 뭔가 좀 익숙한 그런 말이지 않습니까? Do you know where this get where this uh, come from this Bible text? 어, 이 화면에 나오는 그 성경절이 어디서 나온지 아시죠? Where does this come from? Do you know? 어디서 나오는 것이죠? Okay, some says Exodus, okay. Some says Revelation. Well, this comes from the book of Jonah. <laughs> Jonah chapter 1. Uh, Jonah says, I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. So, and they feared the Lord. And then the idea of great city. And the idea of Jonah came out from the city because he didn't want to be destroyed together with the city. Uh, ah, this sounds like what we have in Revelation, perhaps. Uh, well, even in the book of Revelation, we have also the mention of the word great several times. Great. Just to make some connections between the book of Jonah and the book of Revelation. Since both are concerned of mission. You have the word great earthquake. A great day. Great star. Great river. Great hailstorm. Great dragon. Great eagle. Oh, many word grades in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation also we found some of these phrases. God created all things. By you will they were created. You created the heavens. He made the heavens and the earth. Oh, so what you found in the book of Jonah, you can also find in the book of Revelation. Very interesting. Well, for me it is interesting. I don't know it is for you. Sometimes people are very confident that whatever interesting for him must be also interesting for others. <laughs> and sometimes teachers do like that to their students. They ask the students, is it interesting? <laughs> but maybe for some students, they well, say, not really. <laughs> But for me, this is interesting because I can see connections. That what I found, some elements and components I found, and message I found in the book of Jonah, I can also see somehow in the book of Revelation. Several times the word great city is also mentioned in the book of Revelation. Okay, great city. You can see the reference there, eight, uh, 11 verse 8 and then the 16 verse 9. 
Great city, great city, great city, all great city. 계속 큰그 도시에 대한 이야기가 연속적으로 나옵니다. So the book of Revelation is also about the great city. 요한계시록 또한 큰 도시에 대한 책입니다. Well, 도식입니다. it may not be the great city of Nineveh. 니누웨에 대한 이야기는 아닐지 몰라도. But it is the great city of 어떤 도시지요? Of Babylon. 바벨론에 대한 이야기입니다. Okay. So the book of Jonah reminds us of our identity. 요나서는 어, 우리의 우리가 누구인지 아이덴티티에 대한 이야기를 나누고 있습니다. His identity, he said, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. His identity. 요나는 본인의 정체성에 대해서 어, 나는 히브리 사람이요 바다와 육지를 지으신 하늘의 하나님 여호와를 경외하는 자로다 했습니다. Our identity, according to the book of Revelation. We are those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. So when people ask me or people, people ask you, who are you? I would say I obey God's commandment and I have the testimony of Jesus. And then from there we can continue explaining about our identity. So the book reminds us of our identity. But it also reminds us of our mission. What is the mission of Jonah? What is his mission? Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. And what is our mission? The eternal gospel to be proclaimed to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. 땅에 거주하는 자들, 곧 모든 민족과 종족과 방언과 백성에게 전할 영원한 복음입니다. Fear God and give Him glory because the hour of judgment has come. 하나님을 경배하며 어... Verse 7 그의 심판 어, 하나님을 두려워하며 그에게 영광을 돌리라. 이는 그의 심판의 시간이 이르렀음이니 하늘과 땅과 바다와 물들의 근원을 만드신 이를 경배하라. Yes, you have translated everything. <웃음> 다 통역을 했습니다. So this is our mission. 이것이 우리의 미션입니다. So in every time, from the time of the Old Testament until our time, God would always have a people, a messenger, a message, a mission to be done. 구약의 시대로부터 지금까지 하나님께서는 언제나 백성을 가지고 계셔서 메시지를 세상에 전파를 하시기 할 그런 사람들을 선별을 하셨습니다. There was one for Jonah. 어, 요나에게 어, 메시지를 전할 대상. There is one for us. 그리고 우리에게 또한 전해야 할 메시지가 있습니다. And they are similar. 그리고 아주 유사한 메시지입니다. So the book of Jonah reminds us of our target of mission. 요나서는 우리가 어떤 사람들을 대상으로 미션을 해야 하는지 그런 선교를 해야 되는지 이야기를 해 주는데요. His target of mission was the great city of Nineveh. 어, 요나의 경우는 니누웨 성읍이었고요. And our target of mission is Babylon the Great. 그리고 우리의 미션은 큰성 바벨론입니다. The message of repentance should be proclaimed to the Babylon of Great. The great. Come out, my people, of her. That's the message. So now you can see that we are making a bridge, so that we can cross from the book of Jonah to the book of Revelation. 이제 요나서에서 요한계시록으로 가는 그런 다리를 저희가 탔는데요. And I think we are building a good bridge. 아주 좋은 다리인 것 같습니다. I said, I think. I have to be very careful. So that we can cross from the book to the book of uh, Jonah to the book of Revelation. There are three key words, at least for me, in the book of Jonah. Creation. Salvation. And mission. 
in our Adventist schools, in our Adventist institution, in our Adventist church, we should have these three components. We need to emphasize biblical creation. And we, when we talk about biblical creation, we talk about Sabbath, we talk about family, we talk about many things related to creation. We need to emphasize salvation. And when we talk about salvation, we talk about sin, redemption, judgment, second coming, etc. And we need to emphasize mission. The message, the messenger, the target of mission must be prepared. Can we do that? Let me move back one more time. Can we do that? The city is great. The cities are great. The challenges are great. Can we do that? Remember, the mission is great. The message is great. But the commissioner is great. God is great. I'm happy. Should I stop now? Let me continue. Let's go now to Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. Well, there are 20 chapters of the book of Revelation. And somehow, at the center of the book, we have chapter 12, 13, and 14. These three chapters. This gives us the outline of the great controversy from the beginning to the end. And the message in the midst of this great controversy is the three angels' messages. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and springs of water 하나님을 두려워하며 그에게 영광을 돌리라 이는 그의 심판의 시간이 이르렀음이니 하늘과 땅과 바다와 물들의 근원을 만드신 이를 경배하라 I've tried to prepare uh, uh, this PowerPoint presentation in such a way that even if you are not opening your Bible now, you will open it later at home. At least you can understand a little. If everyone has Bible, I would like just to turn off the PowerPoint and we are holding our Bibles together and open the pages. So I would like to call these three chapters 12, 13, 14 being the central section of the book of Revelation. And Revelation chapter 14 verse 7, the text that we have just read, is to be understood in the light of this central section of the book. Well, I have to be a little bit uh, uh, slow here. At the beginning of this section, we have the story about the beginning of the conflict in heaven. I hope you can remember and uh, try to, to recall what is written there. There was war in heaven, according to the Bible. There was conflict. The dragon and 
his angels and Michael or Michael with his angels. 그리고 어, 어, 용과 그의 천사들이 미가엘과 그의 천사들과 함께 전쟁을 치렀습니다. So the setting was in heaven. 하늘의 하늘이 배경이고요. And then after that we have a description about the works of three beasts. 그 후에 어, 세 가지 짐승에 대한 이야기가 나옵니다. What we are going, what we are doing now is to see more closely about our message, the three angels' message. Okay? So that you know that we are still within the track. We are not out of the track. Why do we say that we have the works of the three beasts presented in the central section of the book of Revelation? 요한계시록의 정중앙에 이세 가지 세 짐승에 대한 이야기가 나올까요? Are there really three? 정말 세 짐승이 있는 것일까요? Can we mention them? 짐승이 셋이 무엇이 있는지 얘기를 할수 있으십니까? Although we don't know the name, maybe. 어, 이름은 알지 알수 없을지 모르겠지만. Ah, there is a beast that comes out from the sea. 어, 바다에서 that 나오는 is one. 짐승이 있고요. 첫 번째입니다. That is found in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. Okay. And another one is a beast that comes out from the earth. That is found in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. So we have already two beasts. But there is another one. The dragon, because dragon is a beast. 용이 있지요. 용 자체도 짐승이니까요. Okay, so there are three beasts. The works of the three beasts. 그래서 용그세 가지 짐승이 하는 어 그런 일들에 대해서 나옵니다. And now the next part of this section is the victory of the lamb. 그리고 그 후에 나오는 것이 양이 승리하는 것입니다. It is described in Revelation chapter 14 verses 1 to 5. Now look at this. We have also that is corresponding to the works of the three beasts is the works of the three angels. And toward the end of this central section of the book of Revelation, we have the description about the end of the conflict. So these three chapters, 12, 13, 14, including some part of chapter 11 and the beginning part of chapter 15, describes the great controversy from the beginning to the end. 12장, 13장, 14절, 그리고 또 앞뒤로 조금 절들을 조금 붙이면 이 대쟁투에 대해서 처음부터 끝까지를 이야기를 하는 것을 볼수 있습니다. It begins in heaven. 하늘에서 시작이 되고요. And it will, the ending will be also celebrated in heaven. 그리고 결말 역시 하늘에서 일어납니다. There is one site here with the three beasts. 한쪽에서는 어, 세 짐승이 있고요. And on the other side, the three angels. 그리고 다른 쪽에서는 세 천사가 나옵니다. Interestingly, in the middle of this piece of of a passage, in the middle, you have a description about the Lamb standing together with the chosen ones on the Mount of Zion, victorious. So from this simple structure, what do we learn? No matter the conflict is, no matter great the conflict is, it might be very difficult. It is great. But we have the assurance of victory. It is just described right at the center of the center of the book. 어, 책의 중앙에 있는 요한계시록서의 중앙에 있는 구절들의 가장 가운데에 있는 것이 
하나님께서 승리하신다는 것입니다. I think this is very comforting. 정말 우리에게 위안이 되는 그런 구절인데요. When you are in the big fight, 어, 어떻게 어, 큰 음, 어, 투쟁을 하고 있을 때, or maybe you are in a competition or in a, a game competition or whatever, but you know that how no matter how hard it is or it may be, you know that you are going to win. 또는 치열하게 경쟁을 할 때, 얼마나 지금은 정말 힘들더라도 내가 승리를 할수 있다는 보장이 있다면 얼마나 큰 위안이겠습니까? Even when you fall down, you know I can stand up and I will win. 내가 쓰러질지라도 넘어질지라도 다시 일어나서 승리를 할수 있을 것이다. Although for two or three years it is very hard to convert one soul, but you know I will win. 이 3년 동안은 어, 좀 영혼을 어, 구원을 하는 것이 정말 어려울지 모르지만 결국은 내가 승리를 할 것이다. Although looking around you see people just do not care about church you know that we will be victorious 사람들이 돌아보면 어, 교회에 대해서 별 관심이 없을지라도 결국에는 우리가 승리를 할 것이라는 그런 확신이 있다면 You know what the reason why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh 니누웨가 니누웨 유나가 가기 싫었던 이유가 하나 있지요 Let's cross the bridge to go back to the other side a little bit. Because we started from the book of Jonah and we crossed to the book of Revelation. But it is good to go back and forth. Anyway, the bridge is there. You know the reason why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh? It was not because he was afraid of the people. 그 백성들이 무서워서가 아니었습니다. Let us read in 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 Jonah chapter 4. 요나서 4장을 같이 보시겠습니다. Jonah chapter 4 when he was praying to the Lord. 하나님께 요나가 기도합니다. He said in verse 2. 2절에 보시면 O Lord. 여호와여. Is this not what I said when I was still at home? 내가 고국에 있을 때 이러하겠다고 말씀하지 아니하였나이까? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarsis. 그러므로 내가 다 빨리 다시스로 도망하였사오니. And then he said the reason. 그리고 I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God. 주께서는 은혜로우시며 자비로우시며 Slow to anger and abounding in love. 노하기를 더디하시며 이내가 크시사. A God who relents from sending calamity. He knew that he would be victorious. He knew that there will be repentance in that great city. For that reason, he didn't want to go. This is very strange. But for us, knowing that there will be victory, Knowing that at the end times God will convert many people and uncountable people. 마지막 날에 하나님께서 많은 백성들을 준비하실 것이라는 것을 우리는 알기 때문에. Although sometimes we feel shy because we are a very small, small group. 때로는 우리가 작은 무리이기 때문에 좀 낙심할지 몰라도. We need to go. Because we know victory is waiting for us. Let's cross the bridge. We return to the book of Revelation. Let's look a little bit uh, uh, deeply about the three beasts. And then we would like to see that the main issue of this great controversy is the issue of worship. 사실 이 대쟁투의 가장 핵심적인 주제는 경배에 대한 것입니다. I think I have basis in saying this. 이 이런 주장에 대해서 제가 입증을 할수 있으리라고 생각을 하는데요. In the section of the three beasts, the verb to worship or to bow down or to kneel occurs at least six times. 이세 짐승에 대해서 묘사를 하면서 성경에서는 어, 경배를 하다, 뭐, 어, 엎드리다, 무릎을 꿇다 이런 단어들을 많이 씁니다. Chapter 3. 3장이에요. Verse 3. 3장. 3장 14. Verse 4 and then verse 8. You see all those uh, references there. 여기 다 
내용인데요. 13장 3절, 4절, 8절 뭐 등등 어, 이런 구절들이 많이 나옵니다. People worship the beast. 사람들이 짐승에게 경배하고 and the beast also imposed worship. 그리고 짐승이 사람들로 금 경배하도록 하고 and even the other beast would like to 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 operate the power of the other beast and whoever do not receive don't want to accept the mark of the beast and do not want to worship they will be killed worship is the issue 다른 짐승에게 절하게 하고 짐승의 표를 받지 않은 사람들을 핍박합니다 well instead of just believing what is written let us read at least one text 그래서 제 말만 드릴 것이 아니라 최소한 성경절 한개 정도는 살펴봐야 될것 같은데요. Uh, chapter 13 verse 15. 13장 15절을 같이 보시겠습니다. He was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. 그가 권세를 받아 그 짐승의 우상에게 생기를 주어 그 짐승의 우상으로 말하게 하고 또 짐승의 우상에게 경배하지 아니하는 자는 며치든지 다 죽이게 하더라. Verse 12. He exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first the first beast. 그가 먼저 나온 짐승의 모든 권세를 그 앞에서 행하고 땅과 땅에 사는 자들을 처음 짐승에게 경배하게 하니. Verse 8. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. So the issue of the conflict is worship. One word. This has been a continuous battle to gain worship from the time of the battle took place in heaven, even up to the period after this 100, 1260 years, according to this. I don't want to go into the details, but this is what it is there. 처음 하늘에서 어, 전쟁이 사탄과 하나, 예수님 사이에 전쟁이 시작된 이후로 어, 지금 1260년의 기간이 지난 지금까지도 계속 경배라는 것을 두고 치열한 투쟁이 이루어지고 있습니다. So the dragon's effort through the sea beast include. 어, 그래서 바다에서 나온 짐승을 통해서 용은 이러한 일들을 하려고 합니다. In chapter 13 verses 1 to 4, he gave power to the sea beast. 13장 1절에서 4절에 보시면 그 짐승에게 권세를 주고요. And then he blasphemes the name of God. 그리고 그 하나님을 향하여 비방을 합니다. He persecutes the saints. 그리고 어, 하나님의 백성들을 핍박합니다. His efforts through the earth beast include this following. 땅에서 나온 짐승을 통해서는요. 용은 이렇게 합니다. He performs miracles. 여러 가지 기적을 행하고요. He would forbid people to sell and to buy without the mark of the beast. 짐승의 표가 없는 사람들은 매매를 금하고요. Now this is very interesting. Sorry to say this word again. Sorry. 또한 가지 흥미로운 것은 <laughs> when when I'm preaching or when I'm presenting something as if I'm talking to myself that's why I said this is very interesting well look at this the Bible never said that the earth beast is also an object of worship so we've been introduced of the three beasts the first one is the dragon. The second one is the beast that came out from the sea, according to the Bible. And the third one is the, the beast that came out from the earth. And according to the Bible, people would worship the dragon. And people would also worship the beast that came out from the sea. But there is no any record in the Bible that the third beast that came out from the earth received worship. Never. What this beast would do is to make every effort in order their people would worship the dragon and the beast that came out from the earth, from the sea. 것입니다. So there is going to be a great power on this earth that will do every effort that people would worship this beast that came out from the sea. 이 바다에서 나온 짐승, 
And this great power described as the third beast, the beast from the earth, this power doesn't care about people worshipping him or not. For that reason, we can say that most probably this power is not a religious power. It has nothing to do with worship. But it has power to push and force, impose worship of other people or of, of, of many people to the beast that came out from the sea. Maybe you would like to know this. Revelation chapter 13 verse 2. It says, The dragon, this is the, the second part of the text, The dragon gave the beast his power, there are three things there, can we mention them together? What does the dragon give to this beast that came out from the sea? There are three things. The first one is what? Power. Power. The second one is throne. And the next one is authority. Now look at this. This reminds us of how it reminds us of how God gave Jesus to sit on his throne we have the reference there so Jesus has throne on which he would sit and Jesus being the lamp would receive power according to the Bible and Jesus himself says that all authority has been given to me. Now what do we see here? The dragon gave power to the beast that came out from the sea. He gave power, he gave throne, he gave authority. Three things. As if he was saying to the beast that came out from the sea, the dragon said to the beast, My friend, Jesus has power, I give you power. Jesus has throne, I will give you throne. Jesus has authority, I give you authority. So what Jesus has, you will also have. What, this tell, what does this tell us? This tells me that this beast that comes out from the earth is the Antichrist. Not according to me, but according to the Bible. Because whatever Jesus has, the dragon would give that they could really fight in the battle, in the conflict. That's why we say, oh, this is the Antichrist. And we have basis in saying that. Let's go and see again about these three beasts. The sea beast plays the role of the Antichrist and indeed he is the Antichrist himself. Behind this Antichrist is the dragon that gave him power. And before the Antichrist is the earth beast that later will execute his power. So this beast that comes out from the sea. Well, 
I'm covered by this pulpit, but it's all right. Let me just illustrate to you if you can see in the live streaming. This beast is standing here. Behind the beast is the dragon backing him up. In front of this beast is another beast that will execute the power of this beast. What is the purpose? So that everyone will worship this beast. And the result of the effort, according to the Bible, the entire world worship the dragon, according to the Bible. And they worship not only the dragon, but also the beast. And all who dwell on the earth will worship him, the sea beast. Now remember, in the structure of the central piece of Revelation, we have this structure like that, if you still remember. The beginning of the conflict, the end of the conflict. You see, this is not PowerPoint, so you have to imagine now. <laughs> and then the three beasts, and corresponding to the three beasts is the three angels, remember? And in the middle is what? The victory of the Lamb. So we have already discussed the three beasts is about here. Now let us see the three angels here. So that we know when we say we are proclaiming the three angels' message, we know about the setting. Now let's go to the three angels. When you have a live streaming like this, even if you are over time, you cannot stop, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see a little explanation about the first angel. Because there are three angels. The Bible says he is flying in the midst of heaven. That's what the Bible says. And then he has the eternal gospel. And then he has a message to those who dwell upon the earth to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he speaks in a loud voice. So this is the characteristics of the angel. Another thing about the three angels. Worship is also the theme of the message of the three angels. Just like the word worship is a key word in the section of the three beasts, worship also is the key word in the section of the three angels. And this makes the issue of the great controversy is really worship. Whom we will worship? Look at this. You have the three beasts and you have the three angels. About the three beasts it says, Authority was given over every tribe and people and tongue and nation and all who dwell on the earth will worship him, worship the beast. Wow, it mentions the tribe, people, tongue and nation. And when they are worshipping the beast, on the side of the three angels, there is a message to every tribe, people, tongue and nation. And that is worship. The eternal gospel. Worship. Now in the chapter 13 verse 15 on the side of these uh, three beasts, it says in chapter uh, 13 verse 15, 
it causes as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. 그 짐승의 우상에게 생리를 주어 그 짐승의 우상으로 말하게 하며 또 짐승의 우상에게 경배하지 아니하는 자는 며칠인지 다 죽이게 하더라. But from the other side of the conflict it says if anyone worship the beast and his image he will also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. 하지만 또새 천사들은 어, 누구든지 짐승과 그의 우상에게 경배하고 이마이나 손에 표를 받으며 하나님의 진노의 포도주의 잔을 마시게 될 것. So now you can see the conflict. From this side, the, the proclamation was that if you do not receive the mark of the beast, and you, if you do not worship the beast, you will be killed. From this side, it says, if you worship the beast, and if you receive the mark of the beast, you will also drink from the wine of the wrath of God. 반대편에서는 내가 짐승의 표를 받고 그에게 경배를 하면 하나님의 분노의 포도주를 마시게 된다고. And who are here standing in the middle of this conflict? 이 가운데 서 있는 자는 누구입니까? It is the people, the tribe, the nation, and the tongues. 이 백성과 방언과 족속 이 사람들이 그 가운데 서 있어. Those who dwell on the earth. 이 세상에 거하는 모든 거민들이. It is the great city of Babylon. 바벨론이란 성읍에 거하는 자들입니다. And who will preach this message of worship? 이 경배에 대한 메시지를 전파할 자는 누구입니까? It is you. It is me. 여러분이고 저입니다. It is God's people. 하나님의 백성입니다. It is the remnant of this end times. 이 마지막 남은 백성들입니다. The last remnant and after this remnant there is no other remnant. 남은 자들 외에는 그 다음에는 또 다른 남은 자가 없습니다. There are only seven periods of churches in the book of Revelation. 교회는 일곱 개밖에 없습니다. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea, seven of them. And so and so on, until Laodicea. And according to the writing of the pen of inspiration, we are in the period of Laodicea. And sometimes the end time church is described as having some characteristics of the Laodicean church. 그리고 마지막 교회가 때로는 라우디게아 교회와 유사한 여러 이점들을 갖고 있는 것으로 나옵니다. But the Bible says there are only seven churches. 하지만 성경에는 일곱 개의 교회밖에 안 나옵니다. There is no church number eight. 팔 번. So the message should be proclaimed in this period of church because there is no other church. 다른 교회가 또 없기 때문에 마지막 교회에서 이 기별을 전해야 합니다. We are the end time remnant. 우리가 마지막 남은 백성. There is another lesson about how we know that we are the last remnant, but it may be for the next Jerem conference. 우리가 이 마지막 백성인지 남은 백성임을 뭐 연구하려면 좀더 많이 연구를 해야 되는데 오늘은 깊게 들어가진 않겠고요. In this light, I just describe that we are really living at the end times. 우리가 마지막 시대에 살고 있다는 것을 제가 말씀드렸는데요. Although the mark of the beast has not been imposed yet, but it is going to be done. 아직은 짐승의 표를 사람들이 받지 않았지만 이제 곧 그런 시대가 도달할 것입니다. I restrain myself from analyzing politics because that is not my area. 어 저는 이제 정치에 대한 전문가가 아니기 때문에 정치에 대해서 이렇게 깊게 분석을 하진 않겠는데. But many people would try to make one-to-one correspondence between what is going on and what is written in the Bible. 어 하지만 많은 사람들이 성경에 써 있는 것과 지금 현재 일어나는 것들의 사이에 일대일로 대응을 찾으려고 합니다. But although we are not historian, historian, we know. 어 하지만 역사학자는 아니지만. That things are being fulfilled. How about Sabbath? Maybe this will be my last slide. I discount maybe about 20 slides. But let me say, let me say this. How do we know that Sabbath is an issue? And it is related with worship. Now, before we talk about Sabbath, 
let us see if we can really find the Ten Commandments in this great controversy. Let us see the setting of this chapter 12, 13, and 14. And it is found in Revelation chapter 11, verse 19. And God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the Ark of the Covenant. This is the only place in the Bible where the Ark of the Covenant is mentioned. And what is in the Ark of the Covenant? It is the Ten Commandments according to the Bible. Well, that is why we have in chapter 12, verse 17. The dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring. And who are these? These are those who obey God's commandments. It is mentioned there. Well, this should not surprise us because at the beginning it says, I saw the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, and then in also chapter 14, verse 12. The Bible says, This calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. <coughs> and since this is about worship, connected to the Ten Commandments, what is the first commandment? You shall not have other gods before me. Okay. But look at this in chapter 13. Man worship the dragon. So if the first commandment says, Thou shall not have other god before me, in the great controversy, people would even make dragon as their god. They worship. So for this commandment, there is a counterfeit. What is the second commandment? Thou shalt not make any image and worship to it. Now, let us look at chapter 13, verse 15. He was given power to give bread to the image of the first beast, so that, if it, so, so that it could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image will be killed. Second commandment says, Thou shalt not make image and worship. But look what this dragon and the other beast are making. They make beast of the first beast and then they worship. So for the second commandment, there is something that they do against it. Now, what is the third commandment? Thou shalt not use in vain the name of, thou shalt not blaspheme, thou shalt not use the name of God in vain. What does the beast make? Or do? 13 verse 6. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. Now, 
The third commandment says, "Do not blaspheme the name of God." But the beast blaspheme the name of God. So for the third commandment, there is something that the beast is doing against it. What is the fourth commandment? Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Can, and we can see the echo of this fourth commandment in Revelation chapter 14, verse 17. Which you can find in the Old Testament only in Exodus chapter 20, verses 10 and 11. 구약에서 어, 출애굽기에서 이야기하는 어떤 성경 구절을 쪽에, 어, 요한계시록에서도 이야기를 하고 있습니다. Being part of the fourth commandment. 넷째 계명의 하나입니다. 일부입니다. And it says like this in chapter 14 verse uh, 7 Revelation. 14장 7절에 보시면 요한계시록에 Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. 하나님을 두려워하며 그에게 영광을 돌리라. 이는 그의 심판의 시간이 이르렀음이니. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and springs of water. 하늘과 땅과 바다와 물들의 근원을 만드신 이를 경배하라. This is about and related to keeping the Sabbath holy. 이것은 그 안식일을 거룩하게 지키는 일과 관련이 있는 것입니다. If for the first commandment, the beast would have something against it. So also for the second commandment. And for the third commandment. I will not be surprised. That before the second coming of Christ at the end time. The beast will do something against Sabbath worship. How is it going to happen? Just wait and see. You know the prophecy. And it will really take place. And we are now here in the middle of this great controversy. We cannot run away from God. We should run together with God. We should not be afraid. Because although the, the challenges are great, the cities are great, the fear is great, but God is great. And this is His mission. If there was victory in the mission of Jonah in Nineveh, there will be victory in God's mission now. If we have ever run away from God in the past, if God gave Jonah a second chance, He will still use you and me. May the Lord bless each and every one of us. That we will stand courageously in spreading the gospel, the eternal gospel. Amen.